Did you know that there are more than a million home brewers in the U.S.? From your neighbor's backyard to the White House kitchen, more beer is being made at home now than ever before. And there's never been a better time to brew a batch. But we didn't always have it this easy. You may have heard of a little hiccup called prohibition. In 1920, beer was banned and watering holes disappeared. But that didn't stop America's thirst for great beer. Not by a long shot. We took to our kitchens with mash paddles in hand. Boomerang belonged to the rebels, the artists, the thirsty. Come 1933, prohibition was no more, and breweries were back in business, while us home brewers were still outlaws. That's not fair at all. Even when President Jimmy Carter legalized home brewing nationwide in 78, individual states still needed to establish their own laws regarding the hobby. Meanwhile in Colorado, a group of mountain folk rallied to spread the joy of homebrewing. Homebrewing is the ability to reproduce the, the variety of beer that this country used to have. Led by Charlie Papazian, this motley crew called themselves the American Homebrewers Association. We became official on December 7, 1978, when the first issue of Zymergy Magazine was published. As homebrew know-how flowed throughout the country, the AHA's mission expanded to protect people's right to homebrew in all 50 states. So, we went to work. Some states followed President Carter's lead, quickly adopting fair homebrew laws. Others took over 30 years of lobbying. And finally, in 2013, homebrewing was legal in all 50 states. Yet our cause continues. With your support, we fight for fair homebrew laws and the right to make and share our beer, to protect this beloved American pastime. So raise a glass in honor of homebrewing's roots in American tradition. To the founders of the American Homebrewers Association, who took homebrewing from outlawed to mainstream.